Yes, he is. He's got, um, you know, uh, sort of age-wise, he's similar, and the sort of general character of his face is quite similar. We knew we'd be able to enhance it, you know, because Maxwell has these kind of nice folds under here, and, um, you know, just looking at pictures of Maxwell next to Roger, you know, we, we knew we had to change his forehead and cover his eyebrows, and Maxwell's got those huge black bushy eyebrows so those are all hair inserted one at a time uh, to create Maxwell's eyebrows so we knew we'd, we'd be doing that and then it was a case of how much we wanted to transform him into Maxwell or how much we wanted to keep Roger you know so we, we that's always the case really finding the balancing act really. Uh, initially we take a, a, a live cast and then we get the actor in and we do a photo session with them and then usually I have a play around in Photoshop you know transposing one uh, you, you know you can even take a picture of Maxwell and cut and paste and paint over it and give myself an idea of what it's going to look like and then um, and then we just start the sculpture really I had uh, um, a, a sculptor called Josh Weston who's been doing a lot of stuff uh, working with me over the last uh, five or six years and longer even and uh, he started sculpting on the plaster cast of Roger's head and that's and then between that really we just go to and fro and make suggestions and tweak it around until uh, we get the character. It's becoming a part of it more and more technology. Um, we, in this instance, uh, we have a, hand, uh, a scanner, a facial scanner in the workshop that I've just purchased. So we're able to uh, take a 3D scan of the actor's face now and then 3D print it. Uh, what we found this time, when we, when we take a life cast, it's, uh, it's a, a material, it's a rubber material that's pasted over someone's face and backed up with plaster bandage. And what we found, the weight of the material can distort the shapes a little bit, you know, it distorts the bottom lip and we found that it distorted this a little bit and the cheeks. So we 3D printed that and placed it in into the life cast of uh, Roger before we did the um, master mold in order to start the sculpting process, you know, just so that we had the correct expression. So more and more we're using that kind of technology. Um, once the skin texture, at the moment it doesn't scan skin texture as well as taking a life cast. So, uh, but 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 it's not far off now, and it, it will get better and better. And I think once once the skin texture is is as good uh, uh, when it captures all the skin pores and texture uh, as well as a life casting material, then we we won't be life casting anymore. We'll just be we'll just be scanning actors. The basic process is you have your you, know, you take your head cast of the actor, you have a plaster cast. And then uh, you sculpt in, in uh, uh, oil-based clay, or we do. Uh, we sculpt the whole makeup in an oil-based clay. Um, once we've got the character, we then uh, submerge the whole sculpture underwater, uh, and we have a, a, a separating material from the plaster to the to the to the oil-based clay uh, or wax-based clay. Um, and then we can lift off various parts of the sculpture. So you you'll cut through the sculpture, take the forehead piece off. You'll blend away the cheek edge, and then you'll make a, a separate mold of that particular area to make your core. And then you place the forehead piece back on, and that way you separate out the forehead. And you do the same with the nose and with the face piece. You take it off and you make the cores separately. So you, you work in reverse, into the reverse way you're gonna stick it on. Um, so if you're gonna apply um, the forehead last, that will be the first piece that comes off then the nose will come off and then the face will come off and uh, and then we mold each of those pieces separately uh, the mold is open the clay is cleaned out leaving the space in between we spray a plastic barrier on both sides of the mold pl place the mold back together again and inject silicon into it and that once the silicon is set it almost creates like a bag with a dissolvable uh, plastic edge and that's how we get our final appliances. They're made out of uh, silicon, out of a mold. So it's quite a long process. Probably six weeks to uh, create this makeup from start to finish. It's, you know, the face. What is it about Maxwell? And he, he Maxwell has a, a flat, flat chin. So we filled this out in, in Roger and he's got a thin lips. And, you know, we've kept some of Roger in there. Um, you know, we didn't want to cover him up completely. It's, it's usually, you know, you can try too hard to 
achieve your character and then you lose your actor and it's a fine balance between one and the other. He's pretty much covered Roger but it, but the appliances are quite fine and thin you know there's not much material on this neck bit we've just added we've just widened his jaw we've widened his chin because uh, Maxwell's got quite a strong chin and it's really just picking out all those anatomical things and using our knowledge of anatomy to make sure that when our Maxwell face moves, it doesn't move in a strange way. You can't, you can't change where the nasolobial fold lines are, for example. If you put them here, you know, in this smile, it's going to buckle weirdly on the actual actor's zone. So you, you do have to conform to the actor's facial structure. Jan was uh, making the wig and it, so it's like, you know, where are we going to end the, end the wig? Are we going to keep Roger's hair at the back? And colour that. So that's what Jan's doing at the moment. Her and her team, they'll cover colour uh, um, Roger's hair at the back and the wig ends uh, just below his crown. And then he's got a full lace front. Um, you know, you've got several options uh, uh, with with the way the hair and uh, the, the the actor's hair and the wig is gonna are gonna combine. You know, so we just have some discussions and work it out between us uh, with how our prosthetics are going to work and technically how the how the hair is going to work. You know, do you keep Roger's sideburns or do you cover them up and create the whole thing in a wig? You know, and in this instance, it was it was it was better to uh, create the whole temple hair hairline and wig and everything so he's completely covered but keep the back of his hair so you keep all this uh, stuff at the nape of the neck the game tetris yeah as soon as john mentioned it you know oh, i'm doing this you know i had a quick look on wikipedia said he was doing this film about tetris and the 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 the, the wrangling about the rights to it you know so i read up on wikipedia and it's really interesting but yes i i had you know in my uh, flat at the time myself and my two friends we were at, I was at art college I think and we got the first Game Boy and we just we were obsessed with Tetris because it came preloaded on the Game Boy which is what this story is partly about um, and uh, yeah I mean it's huge it's uh, enormous uh, worldwide you know so you, you reading the script you do get a sense of how how much money there was at stake and why these people are all trying to scrabble for the various rights and I think it was before all this stuff was locked in stone and contracts were were, were much, uh, much tighter these days because everybody's aware of which rights go to what country. And But back then, I think it was probably unusual to have different platforms. You didn't think about the different platforms for the different uh, th different rights, that were, which I didn't know, which is the really interesting part of the whole story, really. <laughs>